Yes, let's get going. <laughs> it's the bewitching hour. Let's call the meeting to order. Uh, Madam Clerk, how about the roll call? Tom Duffy. Here. Tracy Kessel. Here. John McCann. Here. Brian Bissonette. Here. I'm Diamond. He's here. Okay. And Chris he, Rush. He, oh, yeah. I do not see Chris. And then this number does have right. Okay. All right. Let's take the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. And the certification for compliance, Madam Clerk. This meeting has been noted to the public and news media as required by Section 19.4 of the Wisconsin Okay, thank you. And the meeting agenda has been set, unless there's any additions or corrections. Um, move on to public comments. Is there anybody here who wants to be heard? Linda uh, has her hand up. Linda, can you hear us? Good morning, Linda Zilmer, 902 Holly Hill Lane, Birchwood, Edgewater property owner. And with regard to your broadband agenda item, um, I would encourage committee members to maybe listen in on the public safety discussion about uh, cellular communications uh, the county has not, uh, I don't think, talked very much about investing in maybe their own towers, highway, law enforcement, uh, emergency services. They're all dependent on uh, being able to communicate by cell phone, not to mention the people that live here or, or who vacation here. So for a good example is County Highway F in Edgewater, about an eight-mile stretch. There, there are no cell signals. You can't make a phone call, but we have two fiber optic lines from two different carriers. So please consider cell communications just as important as broadband. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Linda. Anybody else that wants to be heard? No, let's move on then to the minutes. You've all been furnished with copies of last month's meeting. Can we have a motion to approve them? I'll make that motion. Okay. All right, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Very well, it's good. Okay, going on then to the Surrey County Fair. Stacy, you've got some info there for us. According to the fair president, he said nothing much to report. Board members are at the fair convention, prepping things for uh, spring to start our improvements on the grounds. All fair planning is complete with the exception of filing vendor spaces. And he was planning to be there, but something came up with work. Andy, what, what do other counties give their fairs? Are we in the ballpark or are we more generous or what? You know, I've actually done a fair amount of work with the fairs, looking at different counties, and it's inconsistent. It depends on who owns the fairgrounds. Like some counties own the fairgrounds and then the fair just operates it, takes all the revenue. Um, some give them money, like I think you're in the ballpark, uh -huh. but if you're looking for anything consistent county to county, some counties operate the fair rather than having a separate organization. So there's not a lot of consistency between counties. But as we look forward, I assume we're going to be contributing here in our <laughs> lifetime with this the fair. I would anticipate it. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Okay. Anybody else have any comments about the fair? If not, let's go on to the University of Wisconsin Extension. Good morning. Good morning. So, um, Brian, I will make sure you get this uh, quarterly report sent to you. Um, maybe right after this meeting, I can do that. I handed out. Uh, paper copy this morning for those in the So, um, and maybe one I can take it to you first, and it's written to you through email. Um, so, uh, this is our quarterly report, the fourth quarter. Uh, just a couple highlights for you. Uh, I'll just go through. For food wise, you can see all the programming that mostly Kim Park is doing, a lot of programming with um, the Coup Array as well as Strong Bodies continues and um, their pilot program of Walk with Ease um, is still continuing. So um, those are good programs to know about. And then um, for Donna, she is still involved in the Heart of the North and those uh, February 2nd is a meeting with legislation in Madison that we've been talking about Madison. So that's coming up and um, the work that she's been doing with that committee. Additional learning opportunities and to talk with uh, Programming for forage, which is the closing post um, to the opportunities that are available. 
Um, Kevin would say he wants to highlight um, all of the produce that is donated back to the county. And so that's in the report this time around. There's a lovely pie chart that he did um, of where all the food goes. So you may remember him talking a lot about the Sea the Kitchen and all of the um, research that happens at the Spooner Ag Station and um, all of the produce that you know, we do. He highlights how all that works in here for you, but basically all the research that's done on you know, how to make um, turnips more pleasing to the eye and the taste. <laughs> and so um, that kind of stuff that happens there and then all of the extra produce that gets to the, um, returned to the community. So there's a nice uh, chart that he was able to come up with of um, uh, all the pounds of produce that get donated back. Um, uh, for me, I am in the process of uh, doing what they tell me to do when it comes to meeting with people for strategic planning and so getting partners input into that. And so if any of you would like to continue a conversation, um, I'm happy to do that and can reach out to you again and just remind you if you want to, here are the questions that we would sit down and um, go through. I think there are five basic questions of just what do you think about when you think of extension and um, ideas of diversifying funding and that kind of thing. So I'm happy to chat with anyone. I don't want to um, bother you about it, but I certainly, I will put the invitation out there for you if you're um, interested in having uh, additional conversation. Um, this morning, we are also going to the tribal board at 10 o'clock um, to talk about Ariga uh, Gregorian's position and what she's doing since they helped contribute to that uh, position. And so Ariga did some highlights for you too in this report and again, we'll be um, presenting to them again this morning. So um, all the work that she's been doing with them too, um, as well as Sawyer County. Um, one of the highlights specifically for Sawyer County is the real colors training that's listed on here um, that we did with the staff here and can want to continue to do that for the program as well. Um, and I will stop there and again, uh, well, I was just wondering, we, we just hired a um, farm to table uh, staffer at the Northern Waters at the school. And so I see a lot of the university, but I don't see a lot of the Hayward Community School District. You co op with them? Yeah. And so, do you know the person saying farm to table? Um, I can't recall. She's she's new this year. And so, and I, I am not the liaison for the Northern Waters, but that would be either you could call Northern Waters Direct or Superintendent Olson. Um, but she's not just at Northern Water, she's going into the other classrooms, but I think that that would be a good co-op measure uh, with the Hayward School, because I think sometimes that gets lost, uh, is working down the road here. Yeah, I, I'll put the plug in Kevin's ear. My guess is he's familiar with it, uh, because he's he's connected with uh, other part of the table, the, you know, he's across three counties, but I'll make sure that he, Okay, thank you. So your desk now is where? In, in Washburn County or Sawyer County or where are I'm you hanging sure. out? My printer is in Washburn County. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I travel between the five counties, but that's yeah. where my printer is. So if okay. I really want to work. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody have, else have any questions? Okay. Let's move on then to Hayward Lakes. Sherry. Okay. <laughs> Um, so what I did is a recap for 2022. So I'll just kind of go through a little bit. Um, Thank you. Let's see what we're up to. Okay. So this at the very top is the website graphic summary that I kind of just put together. And the only thing that I wanted to bring your attention to was that sessions is up about six percent, six and a half percent. People are I'm going to look at them stand. So I'm really happy about that. The mobile desktop is still enough. Okay. I've always been seeing people down, but now it's people maybe not at work. Checking us out. <laughs> Watching the webcam. Seeing them on my um, The channel is that people are finding us. Um, okay. Like that's free. Um, directing, they type their name right in. Um, so that we like that as well. Um, 
referral, that's 90%, 93%. And that's um, where to pay for some marketing and then it actually directs them to our website. Um, so then under here, top referrals, left in the middle there, um, kind of just shows you some of the places that we place money and then how many referrals we get back. That's where you can see the organic was 75,000 sessions. Um, um, Madden was up. And that is we pay for those are most Google AdWords that I got a couple months ago. I showed you all those words. Okay. Um, Travel Wisconsin also was up. And that is the state site for tourism. Um, there. Then it kind of shows you what where they're from, what state their computer is from. Um, and who's searching for us? Wisconsin again has been the we have been been here for four years. That's the topic of my year. Um, Illinois and Minnesota kind of flip and flop a little bit. So Illinois is a little bit ahead this year. Um, new this year was Washington, the state of Washington. So I'm not really sure what that's all about. But maybe to dig a little deeper, we do get some, um, we'll be getting some statistics and stuff from the Department of Tourism on um, visitors who are coming from their advertising to ours. And it's Berkey related? Maybe we'll see something. Maybe from, I've never seen Washington up in the top. Yeah, uh, so something. Um, Iowa, that's always there. Florida's always there. And I think that's super. It's a lot of people who live here that move to Florida and always keeping their eye on what we're doing. So the top performing pages, number one is our home page. Number two is the webcam. And we have a webcam, but we also have Berkey webcams on there. We have a couple resort webcams on there. So people are just checking out their favorite spots and keeping their eye on what's going on. Um, activities is number three, number four is places to stay, number five is civil building, six is the outdoor report, seven is events, eight is fall color tour, nine is contact us, and ten is issue. Um, those kind of move around a little bit, but usually they stay similar in the top ten. Now, breaking down the activities and what they're looking for, snowmobile is number one, fishing is number two, um, three is skiing, Four is ATV, five is golf, six is biking, seven is swimming, eight is hiking, nine is swimming, kayaking, and ten is shopping. And no surprises there. And the social media performance our Facebook likes are up 14%, which it just goes up every year. And then um, Instagram went up 15%. Um, the top posts for Facebook was we did that whole snap selfie with the snowmobile. Um, that was last year, so those were the top two posts that meant people the mo most people shared it and liked it. And, um, then we had a big must be, it was a local hit from Hayward. I call him James, but anyway, um, he caught a big must be, so that was the third top Facebook post. Um, then Snap Selfie was in there again. And then I don't know if you guys saw the Happy Halloween. Um, they put a big witch hat on top of the musky. <laughs> Everybody went crazy. They loved it. Instagram post was the bunny ears they put on the musky, number one. Um, and then big musky that the kid had caught. And then the Halloween was up there, and then they put a Christmas hat. So obviously, the Hall of Fame keeps people entertained. And then the Fall of Color mostly did. YouTube, um, and I think I told you guys this last year, we totally redid a YouTube channel and we um, put words in there and descriptions. And so um, that went up. We had 21 people who looked at it previously. And then last year we were up to 368. So that's growing now that we've got everything coded right. People can find if they're looking for a certain, you know, ski in the Berkey, they can find it now <clears throat> instead of us just having video one. Yeah. So anyway, 
And then um, we get lots of requests. Every request that we get, we send a vacation guide out. So this goes out with everything. Um, and then this is just kind of the top requests of things that people there are asking for that we send along with our vacation guide. Yeah. John, go ahead. On uh, your marketing partners, is Spider Lake part of Quiet Lakes or are they just missing from? Uh, Spider Lake is not a marketing partner. Not a partner. Are, there, are there other towns that are not marketing partners? They seem like they should be with the other ones that are here. Most of the, see, this is the Quiet Lakes and the Resort Association. Which may include Spider Lake. But Spider Lake. Yes, there's some Spider Lake members. Members of uh, the Quiet Lakes. Yes, resorts. Do, do, do you recall why Spider Lake? chooses not to be a marketing partner? Or? I think because they must be included in quiet links. Why well, don't they uh, sometimes the the line, but they want to be so quiet that they push yeah. away tourism. Spider Lake doesn't have their own resort association. Oh, okay. So that's that would be the yeah. these other towns would and that's why yes, they're, these they're around people, yeah actually okay. have tourism associations. Understood. Yeah. So okay. we do I mean we stop with Spider Lake. Okay, good. It just they stood out like a source from not being on here when I looked at the other but okay. And then the townships that are on here are because of room tax. Yes, yeah, I opted not to. Okay. That, that was my next question. I know you got some meetings that late with Kansas tonight. I can't make it, but oh, okay. um is that a, well, can you tell us a little bit about that that meeting or those types of meetings and what's um, trying to be accomplished or what this issues are there? We just kind of want to run down because we, they're so new. We've only been collecting, well, now we've collected a whole year. So we're, I'm just meeting with them to kind of go over. Okay, so it's just like, it's not like they have issues. An annual review. We're just trying to do an annual okay. review with everybody so that they feel connected and yeah. you know, in case there's something we're not doing. Or, yeah, I wasn't sure of the purpose of it. And I, my immediate red flag was like, uh oh, are they upset? Or, no, no, not that I know of. Okay, no. good. Nope. They just asked me to come and yeah. Uh, Excellent. I mean, they do have some people who are against for tax that are paying it. Sure. Pretty vocal, so we might, they might come tonight. So I yeah. think that's why we wanted to back up. And they're against it because they think that it shies away tourism? No, I think because they feel like they're doing their own, they're doing their own marketing well enough that they don't need. Um, okay. That but that's it's not their, just you guys that get it, it's the townships too. Yeah, so they, they that has to be a reminder. Yeah. yeah. They're sending out similar booklets like this for every being sarcastic. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think you, you do a good job. Thanks. Yeah, we, we're really happy with this. Right. And then we had a contest we covered, so this little one. On your um at top activity page, that's just a monthly January the or year. the whole year. Yep. So snowmobile is number one for the whole year. Sure is. Really? Good job. It's amazing. Um, yeah. is ATB Hayward that's a separate that's a whole separate thing. Okay, yes. okay. So that's ATB, why I was wondering. ATB is now number four because yes, we have a dedicated website okay. just all right. I, I assume. All right. Yeah, I did not bring that information. Okay. Do you get any feedback from the Hall of Fame of the Big Fish? I, feedback. I mean, how did, how is that is is that well attended or up or down or um, what? I don't know. I don't. Emmett stops in a lot in the summer, um, and I don't know. It's, it's kind of nice to know what they do. I mean, what, yeah, it, it's very still very popular. Yeah, I mean, we hand out. Um, they have a coupon, and then it's a dollar off. There's a new thing with all over Yeah. Um, they're, I mean, that is the biggest, one of the biggest questions we get every day is how to yeah. get there. So we, might, we might ask them for a little. Now yeah. the tree's have grown, so they might drive by it. Yeah. And then, you know, they weren't looking for an artifact or whatever. But yeah. yeah it's, it's, it keeps us unique yeah. and yeah. people love it. Yeah, let's see what he'll give and us a report. Social media, they love getting the picture. Good. It's Americana, isn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and, Look at my, I didn't do it this month, but every month I give you the uh, PR, the free PR that we get every yeah. month. The Hall of Fame is in there probably three or four times a month. Really? Because it's unique. It's wonderful. It's what makes us different from yeah. 
Cover it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? Brian, any questions? No. Okay. Thank you. Let's move on to uh, what? Northwest Regional Planning. Did Sheldon give us a report? No. Okay. Kate, you're on for economic development. Okay. Um, happy January, everyone. Um, I did kind of freak out last week when I was thinking that we had the meeting. <laughs> it was on my calendar. <laughs> anyway. And so let's see. We're, we're creating a couple programs. Um, one we've named Business Boost in Sarah County with Andy Donahue and the um, Small Business Development Center at UD Superior. So basically, it's one one on one individualized business consulting at no cost. And we have three dates set up for um, January, February, and March. And I'll be creating some marketing materials this week to get that out. Um, but basically, each date, there's about six appointments that are there. And people can, they can be starting a business or they can be starting to look at succession planning or basically any anywhere in their business. So, um, and they just want some extra insight. But it's an individual experience that tailored to what they need for the for the meeting. So every individual might need to bring different things, you know, different items with them to get the best consulting. Um, about 45 minutes long. And what they'll do eventually is email me and then I'll send it to Andy and then he'll work with them to make sure they're prepared for the meeting. And we'll have them in three different the site locations uh, where the meetings will be held has not been um, solidified yet. But that's pretty exciting, be fun to get that going. Um, and then another little program that I um, want to get going is called Sawyer County Socials. And basically, I'll announce that in January, late January, early February. Um, but it's basically a series of business happy hours with presenters um, for March, April, May, and then September, oct October, and November. So relevant topics in different locations for networking, a presentation, and then a Q&A with uh, professionals. So just little like learning opportunities that, you know, free learning opportunities. Um, the Entrepreneur Fund is, um, you know, they do have quite a bit of about $8 million dedicated to our region. So if there are people that you know of that are looking to either um, um, starting, building, or scaling a business, you can reach out to them to see if there's money available for your project, which is pretty great. But that's Northeast Minnesota and Northwest Wisconsin. And it's just entrepreneurshipfund.org is, is how you get there. Um, and they work with North, Northwest Regional Planning. So kind of everybody works together to build different points. It's been really great to learn about that. Um, I'm working with Jim Miller and uh, Chris from the Chamber and Jim Nats about filling out a vibrant spaces grant for the, the friends and big parking lot that we've applied to make some improve improvements there. Um, it's a it's a grant that's been available through the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation. Um, basically, it's a matching grant. So there's going to be some improvements on it and we can hopefully apply for this grant and then we take it go further to improve it. So um, then we did have Let's see here. We are going to also be seeking memberships for 2023. Completed those forms um, and uh, we'll be distributing them soon, one day. And let's see here. A couple of meetings coming up is the Vision Northwest meeting on January 11th, which is a regional economic development meeting um, with the division of the uh, Wisconsin Business Innovation Corporation. And then, of course, the Heart of the North Bay, Madison, on February 2nd. Um, beyond that, the next biggest thing is the Homes Grant, um, which is on the itinerary. Um, but we're now, we had a meeting with um, uh, with uh, Northwood Tech and then Impact 7 uh, to discuss, um, at, we're, we're now actively looking for land that can be suitable, suitable for building 30 units in a community center partnering with Northwood Tech. So we will be able to provide them with options eventually and then see if they choose us for the next steps and potentially breaking ground in the spring. That's assuming. But Andy might have some extra anything to add to that or he was in the meeting with us. So yeah I, I put it on the agenda just to mm -hmm. anticipate and keep it bring up this so uh, there's three locations in Northwest uh, there's four locations that are kind of I guess we'll call them finalists. Um, Avert, Ladysmith, Minot, and Hurley. Mm -hmm. So yeah, now it's about everybody putting their best foot forward to uh, land one of these projects. Like she said, it's 30 units. The community center would be like an educational 
a lab environment where they could pull up their mobile training units uh, from their uh, workforce training opportunities. Um, potentially to land this type of a project um, based on what some of the other and some of the other communities are putting forward buildings they have to put into the mix. But expecting that we'll put together a, a proposal to the development corporation and potentially the city and county might be asked to put some skin in to leverage the project coming together. I don't think we have those numbers yet, but I guess I wanted to bring that up as uh, something that will be coming down within the next month. Right. Yeah, good, thank you. Okay, anybody have any further questions? Okay, thanks guys. Okay, it's time for the libraries. You're on. Well, I'm Donna from Winter Public Libraries. You know, um, I submitted a report, but we ended the year in November with our fall fundraiser and the monies we had targeted towards or had it geared towards um, repaying that 0% loan that we had because we don't want that on our lien. Um, so tonight I have a board meeting. I don't know what the board's going to decide. For sure, we'll look at the fundraisers we did for the year, pay a portion of the loan off. Um, I mean, it's going to be just a few thousand probably, but I can't say because I have an 11 member board. I'm just an advisor to the board. Um, and then see if there's additional funds going in for that. <laughs> we um, start off the year with our January book sale, which is a fundraiser as well. So that lasts for several weeks inside the library. Um, so if you happen to come down towards winter and stop in the library in the month of January, we are every shelf, or top of the shelves, tables are all full of books for the month. Um, it's actually a very popular sale. I think as things are winding down, um, the locals are really excited to settle down and come and help us um, get rid of some of the books that are donated. These books are all donated to the library as people are cleaning out things, and so we're giving it back out in a, a little sale. We had our book giving tree that it doesn't cost the library anything. It's just something that we facilitate. We have donors from the community that donate money to this project, and then we have local youth. I think this year we had 109 requests for books that local youth chose that they wanted for Christmas. And so we were able to use the funds to supply 109 books to local youth, which is exciting to see um, the book choices and just youth getting excited about reading. Um, and it's 100% supported by community and organizations. And that's something that we've done. I think this was the 11th year um, and is popular. I, I just completed two grants. One is a circulation grant, so it, it would help um, offset costs. It's um, two thirds, it's matching funds. So we would only have to raise one third of the grant. It would be for $1,200. Um, and I, again, we, we do have a few people that would be already have earmarked supporting that if we were to receive the grant. Um, and that would be focusing on the young adult children's um, sections in our library. So that will ultimately help our own budget because that would be less we'd have to, you know, put um, our own funds into that project. So hopefully we'll get that grant. And then the second grant is um, creating science uh, STEM kits. We're circulating them in the community and then we can share them with other libraries as well. So that was a close to a $2,000 um, grant. Both are competitive grants. I believe the STEM kit grants we will find out if we are recipients of that middle of February and that the collecting developments more towards April, May. And I think that's all. I included our closing holiday schedule. Um, we're only closed one, two, three, four, five, five holidays for the year. Otherwise we're open Monday through Saturday um, because we tend, we like to meet the needs of our community and a lot of our People in winter work outside, like Hayward, Lady Smith, you know, and so on their days off, on their holiday days off, they like to come in and use our library. So we try to be open for everyone as often as we can. What What are your hours on Saturday? Uh, our hours are winter time. It's ten till two p.m. and summertime. It's nine to two p.m. So between Memorial Day and Labor Day, we add an hour on to every day of the week in the morning. Good. Okay. And your foundation now is that kind of completed? Oh, cool. yes, our basement project is done. Yeah. Yes. Good. And we have no problems, and the atmosphere, I mean, you can tell the smell. We don't have the 
cold, moldy smell. <laughs> um, so we're very happy with it. We just will be happier when it, we have reimbursed. We, we're not required to reimburse the money, but we don't want that hanging over our head. That's not cool. Okay. okay, thank well, you much. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to motorized trail. Uh, Kathy, you know, with all the snow, you've got to be smiling from year to year. And well, if it weren't for how we received it, um, <laughs> that's that's one thing. So I have no counter data because our trails were closed. Um, the biggest problem we have is again how we received the snow. It caused a lot of damage. We had to close the trails down for eleven days, and which is uh, uh, um, we we haven't. I don't recall ever having to do that before. And it's been a tremendous amount of work. Some of the pictures I've attached uh, kind of show the, the story of what our trails look like. You can't even tell the trails. Mm -hmm. And I, I give these clubs and volunteers and contractors that worked it just uh, kudos for everything they did. Right after the snow hit us, the initial snowfall, the temperatures dropped to Arctic you know, sub-zero temperatures and people were out there working in that and and they were diligent. They um last week I reached out to our trail captains to kind of figure out where they are as far as cost. And so far as of last week, the estimate is about 130,000 in storm damage. And that's a very conservative estimate. Um, probably about eighty thousand in contractor costs that we had to hire out because of course there's a big push. We have a very short snowmobile season. There's a big push to get the trails open. You can't all do it with just our volunteers. And uh, we're at this point trying to figure out where we're going to get the money to pay our contractors. So um, if anyone has any ideas for additional funds, I'd uh, certainly appreciate it because we're going to need it. This amount will probably double by the time we are finished with all the trail cleanup. It's uh, going to be continual because there's residual damage to the trees from the storm. And in addition, we got another probably eight inches just last week, which is causing further damage. Um, and that means trees are going to continue to fall throughout the season. And we have to monitor that and have crews out almost continually. So um, I really don't know what else to say other than we're working at it and our workers are exhausted. Our crews are exhausted. And how, how much money do you get from the state? Um, I think it's about, a, I, I should have looked that up. I knew I should have looked that up before I came. It's not my real department, but uh, I think I think it's roughly 119,000 for the year for snowmobile, and I think just a little more than that for ATV. I can get those figures yeah, okay. for you. With with the de declaration of emergency, will that help? Um, that won't help her. Uh, not at this point. As we did submit uh, early on estimates. Um, Greg Peterson worked with them, and then also we got. Some numbers for the Berkey Trail uh -huh. to submit to the state to try to get the emergency fund. At this point, they aren't. Mm -hmm. um, the quick answer we got back regarding the snowmobile trails is that there's, you know, they give money for maintaining their trails. There's the, the their annual, like their, they turn in their mm -hmm. costs every year and they get their maintenance fees plus they can go into supplemental. Um, we've kind of pointed out that we don't, but that's going to cover anywhere near their costs. But, at this point, we have not gotten any positive feedback on getting trail clean up the of the storm. Mm -hmm. That's from the state emergency. Do any other counties have this problem, or are we unique? No, the Rhino, uh, Rust, and Washburn both had similar situations. Okay. I think it's probably worse here. Okay, but they all, they also had trail closures because of the snow. I just attended the AWSC convention over this weekend, and a little over a third of the state, we figure, was affected by the storm. Although some of the southern the counties south of us, as you go further south, their trails are through farmland, or the majority of their trail systems are through farm farmland. So they weren't as affected by tree damage, of course, and so we've accumulated a lot more in, in cost. My biggest concern is we're trying to figure out we need to pay our contractors. 
which takes from the money that we've received. And in the meantime, we need to groom and continue buying fuel and pay for, you know, all the products we need to, to maintain the equipment and, and move forward. So it, it's not as simple as um, just using the money that we've received to maintain the trails. Well, and that, then, that's under normal operating procedures. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. To a question that I comment or a question. Um, do you have any idea uh, of what percentage of the trails are not open that are normally open? By me, I don't remember ever in 20 years, the trails out on our lake not being open this late. And I don't know if that's everywhere or just happened, and I'm on upper twin, but I'm not sure if that's everywhere. And so do you have any idea of if that's like 20%, 30% I aren't, mar aren't marked? I don't see a lot of traffic on them, probably because of the trees, as well as the snow and ice is terrible. I mean, the way that... Trail 18 is closed down, and that's the one that goes through Twin Lake and down through Callahan and down to the flow. And 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 yes, and that's closed because what happened is we got so much snow, the lakes only had a few inches of ice on them, and snow is an insulator. So um, all the lakes other other than Twin Lake is is... You know, those Callahan and Twin Lake and Tiger Cat Flowage are closed. Shatek, they were just trying to mark that over the weekend, and the ATV that marks the, the lake went through the ice. So um, that one's on hold. But that's storm damage again to a degree because that snow was... It is. Yeah, well, yeah, it is. is a, it, it's yeah. preventing uh -huh. the trail from opening up. Uh, most of most all of the major trails are open they're cleared of major debris and open. It's going to be a continual process. Some of the spur trails, Nine Mile Loop, which is on county forest land off the Tuscobia, that's still closed. They're working on that. Um, 18 and 21, which is over on the far east side of the flowage that goes down, um, they were working on that over the weekend. I don't have a report yet, but the majority of the trails are open. The majority of the lakes are staked and safe to ride on, other than Tiger Cat Flowage and Shatek. As of now, I haven't heard anything about Sisabagma yet, either if that's marked or not. Whatever dollar amount that is, that just goes towards the, the hundred or so grand you were talking about. Right, we have to use that. Andy, the um, the answer from the government on the surface that seems to be inexcusable to me. Mm -hmm. What well, I'm assuming that's their modus operandi. You know, no. You got to ask again, what, what is the, where do you go from there when that when they get that answer? Um, probably just last week, once the new legislators got in place, we started working through a couple of their offices. To Excellent. Get, I mean, we, we've kept our, the dollar amount that we've given them, and I'll give them this. Um, we've left that in there because um, it's still now, it's the kind of the slower process. This, this storm event, I mean, we've got some preliminary estimates. We're gathering each of the towns now, returning in how much they've spent. But we're pointing out that a lot of this cleanup isn't going to happen until spring. Right. So they, and the state's aware of that because some of the trails, all the road debris yeah. is now under yeah, a couple feet of, of snow and it's not, yeah. not coming out. But we're going to keep on pushing for the trails to be included. I mean, some wow. other, you know, they said, I mean, I'm not, this has happened in other years where trails have storm damage. And they say that it's, there's ATV and there's trail money already there. But realistically, even if you get the supplemental, it's not going to be enough to cover those costs. The trails are on private land in some cases, yes, but our argument would be used by while there are trails, they're public right. Right. When they're not so built trails, they might go back at that uh, private use during the off season. So we're just going to keep working with the legislators. So the answer you get back was from a bureauc bureaucratic office. Yeah, that's from so the state. So now you get the legislators. Yep. This is, okay. So and then in the bureaucratic office, that's not a new answer for trail. Right, I would imagine that's their goal to that, right? Yeah. Okay. Because I know we, we submitted it, they said no, talked about it, they said they were going to talk about it in their, once the, once the declaration was through and they had their meetings, they talked about it, they still said no. They'll probably need to be, if it works, be told. Yeah, they're going to need real pressure. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, good, Kathy. Well, just keep working on it, that's all we can do. There's a lot of snowmobiles around, so they're here. 
Yeah, yeah they're here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so the, well, the <laughs> snow on my keyboard effect. No, it's not. No, not having the sound of ice eerie. for the bird. You know, you're used to hearing. They keep rolling it, so it will be. Yeah. Yeah. Drive, they, they drive the air out of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. And, and I can't my dog. That might well. be good to add to you. Because you know, I'm looking yeah. at that slush versus the nice paved snow. Oh, I know. I know. So now I'm involved. Okay, so I passed out the letter from Ben Pop as far as the Berkey is concerned. They too have had a lot of damage. They've spent over $70,000 for cleaning up the brush and the debris, but all the trails are open now. Their, um, their Berkey and the Cody are fully fully um, filled now. There's over 11,125 um, racers already registered. Um, so otherwise, it looks like a great year. There's races every week at the, at the Berkey Trail. Of course, they have a, a, a lot of their big boomers. They can they can push the air out of those those trails, but um, otherwise it'll be a great year. looks Looks fantastic. So, okay, let's let's move on into I guess what broadband. Um, ben, I mean, you're on, Eddie. Yeah. Um, I'll share my screen here as soon as I. That's pretty good. Do a man drive. Directed Starship with the other one there. <laughs> so um, the broadband grants of the state are opening back up. Uh, so we have one request that's come in already. So let's show recap is we are our, our per funds have all been pledged to the building project. We don't have any more funds to grant out of there. But we will have another couple cycles of broadband grants going through the state. So BevCom is applying for a state broadband grant in the Radisson area. So I'll try to pull this up. Kind of see it in the purple shaded area. It's um, in the southwest of Radisson and kind of uh, west of 40, either side of 70 over to Couture a uh, block in that area. The project's going to pass 110 homes. And they're requesting any assistance we can offer uh, to count it up on this project. Uh, project will have a completion date of 2024. Um, you know, I guess I want to just bring this up because what I would do is uh, I'll provide them a minimum, a letter of support for the project that shows the local uh, government entities, government entities supporting the project. Um, the way the grants applications are scored, even a I would say nominal dollar amount from us would help score them additional points, um, even um, like $500. So I was intending to talk to finance committee about come up with $500 to put towards these types of applications. Because that way they can put us as a partner with having some money invested into it. So I anticipate we will see a few more of these as well. This is just the first one that's already coming out. Just roughly, how much of the county is not does not have access to broadband? Well, still a good chunk of it because all the money that we've pledged the last year, those projects, not really any of those. Well, money you pledged in 2021, like to Mosaic down in the town of Edgewater, that project is done. Uh -huh. And Nervados and the town of Lenrith. But all the monies from 2022, those projects are still not either not started or in progress. So okay. I think there's still probably over half. The county that's without, but there's money yeah. pledged on some of those. Yes, but look at taking into account what's been pledged. When those works are done, how much is left undone? Now, how big a are we half done? Are we? A, yeah, I'd say we're half. Definitely half done. Okay. Some of those projects have pretty big uh, territories are covered. I mean, even you get into the definition of broadband too. I mean, most of the like this area, Hayward, they would say it meets. The, Meets the national broadband standard for having broadband. Okay. Now, is it competitive or is it to the where you, where you want to have it? It's still probably substantial. Right? Good. And how about LCO? Are they? They're still, they're, um, I'm not sure if they've gotten any grants, but I know they've been pursuing some grants okay. and partners for the, for the reservations. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have it? John? Uh, it was brought up at public comments on um, cell service. I, I, is that a separate subject? Because um, that was a valid point. I mean, there's a ton of areas out by me that have no cell service, Moose Lake, Spider Lake. Um, 
is, is that, you know, who, whose responsibility ultimately is that? Is that the towns? Is that the, the carriers have to show interest just like on the broadband or because I think that's a good point. It is a safety issue to a certain degree. You can go miles with, with nothing. And if you're out there, um, you know, there, there's no service. Um, ultimately, you need a provider who's going to provide the service, but in areas of the state, rural areas where they've had lackluster um, cell service, some townships are, like, I know townships are served. Maybe there's some counties too. They've made the investment into the infrastructure to make it more, uh, more likely that a provider will come in and put their equipment on the tower. And sometimes those are done in conjunction with uh, broadband projects where okay. uh, I always use like, uh, well, Taylor County is one county that's made a big jump in that direction. They've, they're building their own fiber ring uh, throughout the whole county. And then they're going to rent the space out to providers to come in and use it. And part of that is partnering with, I think, Hudson will see if there be some cell sites off of their broadband. To improve the self self service network. So it has to be a groundswell, whether it be the, and I guess in this case, the community that would have to say we want to. Right. I'll just use the example of the town of Spotter Lake. Some people don't want cell towers and other people do. So there would have to be a swelling at the town board to try to find a way to fund that, I guess, is the yeah. fastest way to do it. Yep. And I don't know about anybody nearby here, but I know up in the, um, it's, it's maybe Vilas County, Oneida County area, someplace up there. This goes back a number of years, but there was there was no private entity driving that. So a couple of townships up there invested their own money in the broadband and the tower itself, and then found somebody to come in and put their equipment on it and sell, sell yeah. their services. Yeah, I'm just looking for an answer. If I'm, if I'm out and about the garbage dump, usually, and somebody phones, he's on the county board, go talk to him. I mean, half the time, it's where's the cell service? Yeah, I, don't like, if, you know. <laughs> I don't know if the county here looked at this like a year, maybe two years ago. Um, there's a few counties in the state that partnered up with a company called Bug Tussle. And Bug Tussle's pitch came, they came to, I think, all the counties and said, you know, we'll come into your county and build a fiber ring. Um, we're going to bring AT&T in. They're going to put some towers off of that. And then like a, you know, we'll have our own um, fixed wireless until somebody wants to start building fiber to the premise and then they can have the fiber to us. And they, would, they said, the county, this is going to cost you 15 million. You don't have to borrow the 15 million. We just want to use 15 million of your borrowing capacity to do the project. Mm. If, if we default, and this doesn't work out, the county is ultimately right. going to have to pay back the loan. But you know, they would, if they were to, def and that, this is happening, so we'll see how this goes for those counties. But if they default, um, or can't cash flow it, the county picks up the loan, but also gets the infrastructure in return. So I mean, that that opportunities are, those opportunities are out there. Okay. If you want to learn more or hear more, we can. We can talk. Yeah. Can talk. yeah. Until then, I advise people to have extra boots and blanket and stuff in their car. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank so, you. any further on broadband? If not, let's move on then to housing. What is there somebody here on housing, Lynn? Is no? Or? And the Historical Society, I assume that's still. Uh, if they're not invited, I don't know if anybody's invited them to join, to so come to the, the only meeting. name I've got is, and he's still on here, was Jim. So it would go to K or Donna, Donna Yackel or KC. So do you need me to get that yes, information? Yes, I don't have any address. So then you're kind of the de facto rep. No. <laughs> um, do you mean, you just want their email yeah. address? Okay. That's how we get, yeah. Absolutely. Thanks. Okay, sure. Okay. Anything further for future agenda items we should put on the, on the, on the table? Okay, if not, we're adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you, Tom. Yeah.